Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Star Chamber Show live podcast. It's a wonderful Wednesday evening in central Kentucky where I, Stephen Zimmer, am broadcasting from for episode number 386 of the Star Chamber Show. Thanks again to Far Cry for our intro music. Great band with, of course, their fearless leader and guitarist, Pete Fry. And tonight, joining me at co-host tonight is a wonderful, vivacious, and back louder than ever this week. Holly Philippi. Hey, Holly, how's it going? Oh, it's going. Hello, hello. <laughs> she's feeling better this week, folks. So get ready because she's got Watch more out. energy. She's getting loud again. She's getting belligerent again. So, yes, it could be exciting. <laughs> we love it. And yeah, we love seeing Holly uh, get better after of some of her periodic bouts of illness. And this is one of the better weeks. So, yes, be ready. And, uh, yes, our brace for a great guest tonight. We can't wait because uh, it's a, a debut as a featured guest coming up tonight who we'll be introducing to you just shortly. But first, uh, we do have a few updates. Of course, the Star Chamber Show is affiliated with the Imaginarium Convention, and we do have some cool stuff to tell you about. And, yeah, there's a bunch of really good announcements coming in the next few days. So you're going to want to keep a look on this on the Imaginarium site. Uh, we did add one new uh, spotlighted guest, and, of course, that's author and editor H. David Blaylock, who has been to Imaginarium in the past, has missed the past couple of years, but we are thrilled that he will be coming back and joining us. Um, he is just a, a, a true sage of when it comes to both writing and, and of course, the editor's perspective. Um, he has been writing speculative fiction for over 50 years uh, with everything from novels, novellas, short stories, articles, reviews, um, online and print. And he's now currently the editor of Paranormal Magazine from Here Earth Publishing. And we are really excited to have David come back, and, and we are featuring him as a spotlighted guest. Yeah, definitely someone you want to pick their brain when it comes to either the craft of writing or as an editor, um, both um, in editing books um, and, of course, putting together magazines and anthologies. Just a superb, superb uh, talent, and definitely it's going to be a huge addition to programming. And uh, we also welcomed a brand new sponsor. We're really excited. They attended for the first time last year uh, simply as an official selection in the film festival, and they liked it so much they came back this year as a sponsor. So that would be Bad Image Productions, and they are they are awesome. Um, they won the Media Innovator Award for Best Up and Coming Film Production Company in t- 2022 in the Midwest region from Corporate Vision Magazine. They're an independent production company founded by Adam Sargent, specializing in feature film production, and they produce the feature films The Devil's Instrument and Darkness Hunting, and they also own the Bad Image blog for all things independent filmmaking. But they are just absolutely fantastic uh, folks. Thrilled to have them uh, board with us as a full sponsor, and you can check their site out at badge, badimageproductions.com. Again, it's badimageproductions.com. And then late this afternoon, we were able to take this live before tonight's show, and we're really excited about this one. But, yes, um, we have um, for you the awards banquet tickets are now available. And, uh, of course, there's a very limited amount of those. And let's see, it is an additional fee. It went up just a little bit because, of course, all the good inflation, food costs, and all that good stuff. But it is definitely going to be a really, really amazing awards banquet because we're expanding the the, the awards. We're expanding the, the Film Festival Awards, the Imagine Awards. 
And, of course, we always have a great night of live entertainment, so you definitely want to catch that um, for sure. That's going to be really awesome. That's going to be a really, really an amazing evening. And, um, yeah, you definitely don't want to miss that. But those are available on the site and uh, so right now. And so you can get those at uh, enterTheimaginarium.com. <laughs> So, yes, it's uh, some good word. You want to give a little few more details on that banquet, Holly? Well, I can tell you about the banquet, and I can also tell you I have actually added some workshops and panels um, already. They're not up on the site. So those of you that listen to the podcast get a sneak preview We're going to add a panel led up by the wonderful Barbara Evers that's called Dr. – I'm going to venture this name. I know the name, but my brain is not going to let me say it. Morale. Morores. Morale. I can never say that name. Laboratory. You know who I'm talking about, Steve, the one that had – you remember the movie that Val Kenmore played in, and he had the island where he had, like, the animals that were DNA. Yeah, the island of Dr. Moreau, yes. Moreau, yes. Well, it's taken that idea, Dr. Moreau's laboratory, using an animal mashup card deck. Panelists are presented with two or three or four animals to mash up. They are given a few minutes to create a name for the animal, determine the characteristics, appearance, habitat, food, etc. And then these descriptions are briefly written and handed to a moderator who needs to read them out anonymously. The audience votes on their favorites, run a few rounds, keep score, and the winner gets bragging rights. Very nice. So that, I think that sounds fun. That'll be an evening panel, just something neat, creative, fun. You know, um, I know the panelists will, will have a lot of fun on that one. I, I know they will. I might even try to sneak in on that that one. <laughs> well, but, yeah, there's going to be pulled up. Go ahead. I was going to say, there's going to be a lot of very interesting panels coming up, uh, just listening to some of the stuff that you've been talking about. Yes, 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 there is. And my computer, for whatever reason, Mr. Zimmer has decided it's going to not let me on the Internet right now, so I've got to work on this issue. So if you would like to tell the menu of the awards, that would be great because I don't want to miss anything. Well, my my internet also went down. Believe it or not. Oh, so, so both of us are down. Yep. It's not just mm-hmm. me. Gently, did mm-hmm. you move that that inter- internet thing? So you, you might want to go re- just go hope did and you reset have, that. It's right there. It's because, right there. Because you might have you might have you might have knocked something offline there, but you might need to get on like real quick here. Okay. Well, I'm uh, okay. Well, I'll go ahead and tell the regular menu. The regular menu is going to be Tuscan chicken and pasta, which is pasta, spinach, tomatoes, and grilled up chicken, all tossed in a creamy Tuscan sauce and topped with some cheese. And then we're going to have the tossed salad with ranch and balsamic dressing, warm rolls and butter, and then the alternating, you know, chocolate cake, carrot cake, and then the ice water, iced tea, and coffee. For the gluten free option, It's exactly the same minus, you know, the pasta. They're going to use gluten-free pasta in place of the regular vegetarian option. Same thing, just removing the chicken. So everybody be eating the same thing, just a little variation. And uh, it sounds delicious to me. I think it sounds fabulous. I worked hard on that to get it worked out to where we could keep the cost affordable and and it'd be something really, really good, you know, something different. And uh, I said, this sounds wonderful. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoy it. Definitely, definitely. And, uh, yeah, we definitely want to uh, welcome, uh, yeah, everybody that's in the chat room tonight. It looks very busy, by the way, tonight. Uh, we have everything from, of course, award-winning uh, filmmaker and author Amy Lee McCorkle in there. Uh, of course, author and, and screenwriter Carol Preflatish. I uh, see our tonight's guest. I won't mention our guest just yet, but our guest is in the chat room right now. Uh, Nick of Prestonia, and then, of course, Sandy Lender. And welcome back, Tommy B. Smith. Yeah, definitely have, have missed you and uh, have, hadn't seen you a little bit, but so, so glad that you're back. 
uh, in the chat room. And yes, as you can guess, I did I did get my uh, internet connection restored, so we're good. <laughs> so yeah, I won't have to have to, to have to do all kinds of uh, gymnastics in order to run everything uh, run the board tonight uh, off the mobile phone. So I don't have to do one of those neat tricks tonight. At least I can use my regular setup tonight. So. <laughs> That's good news. And on that note, yeah, we'll bring you tonight's uh, the folks that brought you tonight's show. And I'm very excited, uh, of course, to always highlight the amazing Sandy Lender. And joining her tonight, bringing you the show is Ren Garcia. So, but first, but first, uh, we do have a new spot from Sandy uh, to share with you tonight. So, give it a listen. Here we go. Do you want nightmares for the Halloween season? I got you, boo. Let the demons, poisonous Adras, monstrous Rifel, evil sorcerers, wicked dragons, and all manner of unsettling characters of the Choices series haunt you this October. But don't worry too much. The amazing Amanda Charisse is learning all she can to protect you from what lands on her balcony at night. Get your copy of Choices Meant for Gods from author Sandy Lender. Available now everywhere fine books are sold. Yes, it's always a good choice to pick up a Sandy Lender book. Can't go wrong, folks. You just can't go wrong. So now we're going to give you a little bit from Ren Garcia with the famous question that we always love to answer on the Star Chamber show. The League of Elder dares to be unusual. It's easy to be swept away in this bold and uninhibited landscape where fantastic heroes become old friends and sinister villains inhabit every dark corner. Dare to explore things best left alone. Each book is your lantern lighting the path to a world never before seen. So what do you say? Are you weird enough for us? Indeed, Red and Garcia, we are weird enough for you, my dear. <laughs> yes, Ren, we are indeed. So, yeah, hurry up and, and give us that final confirmation about coming to Imaginarium next year so we can share that good, long-awaited good news with everyone. So, yeah, don't don't wait, Ren. Give us that good news, man, because we are, are weird enough for you. So, And uh, tonight, yeah, this is going to be fun, Holly, because – Tonight we're welcoming aboard someone uh, that is very near and dear to us and near and dear to the convention and the and the, the Star Chamber show, uh, but has never been featured as a guest before. But tonight, tonight, folks, yeah, we are bringing you someone who is an author, a poet, a screenwriter, and a podcaster. And last uh, Imaginarium, uh, this guest won uh, the award for runner-up as uh, Best uh, Screenplay Short Format. And since then, that screenplay has gone on to be produced as a short film called Screenshots. Of course, screenplay also called Screenshots by Hallowed Hills Entertainment. And as of now, it's getting a bit of a following in the last few weeks on YouTube. It is now nearing the 10,000 view mark. And so, yes, we have something to celebrate tonight with the, our guest on for the very first time as a featured guest, the one, the only, Moon Duan L. Hearn. Welcome to the show, Duan. Your mic should be on. See, see the past that you have is to make me seem so much cooler than I actually am. Uh, <laughs> no, you're so much cooler than, than the whole, whole intro. Yeah, <laughs> so we always have to give you a good intro. we got to always try to give you a good intro, so... Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it, uh, it gave people a little a little information on all your your spheres. But yeah, great to have you as a featured guest tonight. And and yeah, tell uh, uh, well, um, there, there are some folks, believe it or not, that that may not have um, uh, heard of you yet or and encountered you yet out there. And so, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, to introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, well, I am Dwan L. Hearn. I go by the nickname Moon. I am obviously I'm a writer. I, I've been doing screenwriting for maybe about a year or so. Um, married father of four insane children, but if you've met me, that shouldn't be a surprise. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of me. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot contained. <laughs> <though. laughs> and you've been on a, a quite a roll recently, and. And we thought the timing would be perfect to have you on, because uh, at Showtime uh, you had crossed the 
9,500 view mark on screenshots and, and counting. I mean, it's going up every single day. So, I mean, I know it's going to cross 10,000 here in the next few days and then keep going, of course. Uh, but, yeah, that's a good – a heck of a milestone, yeah, for your uh, for your screenplay and and short film with uh, Hallowed Hills Entertainment. It's insane, honestly, because uh, this is what I keep telling everybody. This was a project that was never supposed to see the light of day, and the the fact that it got written, that fact that it got produced, the fact that you know almost ten thousand views have accumulated. Uh, the channels got uh, I forgot how many people the have subscribed to the brand new channel. Uh, it's it's almost overwhelming, almost. Yeah, it's fantastic. Did, I mean, it, yeah, we did get our producer to promise a pizza party if we make it to ten thousand. So feel free to nice. share that. Share, share, share. Party. Yes, There's just like five <laughs> more views, and we'll get a pizza party. <laughs> yeah, five. Yeah, and that that is uh, definitely a worthy goal because everybody knows. Uh, I happen to have an affinity for pizza. I love pizza, so yeah, let's get let's get Moon over the five hundred five hundred more views so they can get over the ten thousand mark, uh, and maybe we could do it tonight. Who knows? Uh, all the all the Star Chamber uh, li- show listeners can run out there and, and watch it like a few times. Get it over, get it over ten k. Get it over. <laughs> that would be great. I need like a sausage and pepperoni. Something happening here. Oh man, that sounds you never good. go wrong with pizza. You never go wrong with pizza. No, no. So I keep telling Holly. <laughs> yeah, I keep trying to convince her. I keep trying. <laughs> but you can't have it every day, you simmer. <laughs> I know. I've been good. I've been very Spartan lately, as a matter of fact. Uh, you know, most folks would be pretty impressed with my my regimen lately. So <laughs> it's been cool. just it's eating fairly healthy. It's fine. It's fine. We got. Oh you. yeah. Oh yeah, we can play around with it for sure. Uh, but wow, I mean, Holly and I, we we saw it like, of course, the first day we got the link uh, from uh, I believe I believe Jason William Jason. Allen had sent us the link like immediately, yeah. and uh, we saw it. We were like, wow, this is really good. And and like I said, it you know, was. I was hoping, I yeah. And it's uh, and and judging by the comments, I mean, people really got into it. And, uh, and and Jason did a good enough uh, job in the, in the, your lead role that uh, he really was was uh, everybody's rooting for him to get killed <laughs> in the, in the comments. Really the, the my one of my favorite one of my favorite comments is like I'm four minutes in and I really want this guy to die. Like <laughs> I saw that comment. Like, I I saw that comment. That's was one of the ones I came across. But yeah, folks oh, really like it. The comments are really positive. I mean. On the uh, on the YouTube thread, I was I was browsing through those about a day ago, and yeah, lots of folks really really enjoyed it, and they got a lot of uh, kudos on on camera work and and the acting and and the, everything in general. I mean, there yeah. was I, I don't think I saw I don't think I saw a negative comment. I don't think I saw one. I don't think I saw one there, I mean, troll. There's, there's a few there's no trolls, but there's a couple. I mean, there's like there's like yeah. one, and he's kind of like overly critical. But at the mm-hmm. same time, you, know, you can't be a creative and not be open to criticism, uh, as long no, as it's in good no, faith. Of course not. Um, so yeah, you know, true. most of it, most of it's been positive. Uh, there's been a couple of things. Um, everyone talks about the glasses in the kitchen scene. Uh, we had a little <laughs> oh, yes. thing. That's a fun, that's a fun story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's okay. So I'll tell this story. I mean, I guess I'm. Sure. I'm always like cautious to tell stories. But I feel like I'm the guest. That's why they called me. So that's, yes, that's, exactly that's, that's, it. that's the idea. The <laughs> so Jason's wanted to do movies. I'm writing, and John had just recently bought a camera. So the three of us are like, okay, so we're really doing this. Let's figure this out. Now, me and Jason have been friends for a long time. Jason and John have been friends for a long time, but I never really knew John. So we wanted to know how are the three of us going to work as a team. So the task was, Moon, write something. Just throw something together so we can film it. We'll get together for a weekend. We'll film it, figure out the editing, figure out all the things that go with making a film, and see how it works. It was a practice run. (laughs) Screenshots is a practice run from Jump. 
John just got the camera. It was Stephanie's first acting role. Jason's done some acting and stuff, and most of his music videos, which are fantastically oh, yeah. done, um, oh, are yeah. also very cinematic. So he's had the most experience out of anybody. I'm screenshots is like my second attempt at writing a screenplay. The first one was horrible, <laughs> and okay. it was a, this whole thing was a practice run. And again, that's why I say it was never supposed to see the light of day because we just wanted to see if we could work together, if I could write a script, if they could edit a film. And then I just kind of got, had like an extra some odd dollars and went ahead and said, you know what, I'll throw it in the Imaginarium just so I can see what the process is like of, of submitting something for when I write something serious. And then next thing you know, I'm a finalist. And the next thing you know, I'm being called up front. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you got to get in the here. arena that, that that makes things happen. And so, yeah, kudos yeah, to you for, for you stepping him. forward. Yeah, was, and uh, good things can happen. It, it, it's been such a weird ride, and that's one of the reasons why it's been so so weird, because it's like it was a practice run. And now we're sitting back looking at the next project, like what's supposed to be like the first real project. And we're like, this is what we did and what we've gotten from the practice run. Now right. the bar set pretty high. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, but you, uh, you say, never know. When so, yeah. Go ahead, Holly. You also take that criticism that you've received and notes from friends or whatever, you know, fellow colleagues, peers. And mm-hmm. – you apply that to the next one. With every film, you learn something. I, I have yet to be on a film set that I have not learned something from. You know, whether it be oh, absolutely. behind the scenes or acting or, or writing. Or, you learn something every film. I've written mm-hmm. short stories and stuff before, so writing screenplays was a, was a brand new thing. Like I said, I wrote one. It was called Tips, and it was bad and <laughs> after after i after i wrote it i'm like okay so let me see what i can do better and i read some books and i looked at some things i had downloaded some scripts to use as reference points um shout out to james sabata because james sabata was like really really helpful with like format and giving me very honest criticism no matter what uh, positive and negative you know he's giving me like all the steps so shout out to James Sabata for that. It's been an awesome friend and colleague. And so I put all that together and I applied all that stuff that I learned from tips to screenshots. Here we are. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Yes. And and Sabata y- 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 is the man. Love and, and I know you call it kind of a test pro yeah, Sabata is just phenomenal and yeah, I, get, lo- I love the panel ideas he and Holly discuss. They have they, they come up the craziest oh, no. stuff, and it, it's we're, always we're amazing. <laughs> yeah, be, be oh, yeah, he, this he, year. <laughs> oh, I know. He runs some stuff by me uh, sometimes. I'm just like, dude, that's mm. that's weird. I love it. And he's he's always trying to get me to like sign up. He's like, sign up for panel so I can get you in on this. Sign up for panel. Yeah, so get. It. I'm like, ah. I don't know. Hey, you will. Know. One day you you will. We're watching. Uh but <laughs> but I tell you, yeah, in addition to Sabata though, I mean you had a uh, a small team numbers wise in this first test project, but but had some I mean, some people some really deep experience. I mean, not enough people I think know uh about John Mattingly from American Recording Company there in Louisville. Uh but you know, he is he's been known for a long time as as a really superb uh, producer, mixer, engineer, and songwriter, and and he's worked in collaboration with Jason William Allen a lot. Uh, but yeah, he's, I mean, he's produced some stellar music videos, and and I don't know how many Holly, um, I'd have to go count them, uh, but he has he has won uh, multiple um, film festival awards in the music video category over the years. Uh, because I mean, on all, like I said, go look at the stuff he makes. I mean, it is. It is really top tier stuff, and uh, so when I knew that John was going to be in it. I mean, that, that was fantastic, and and then of course Jason. I mean, Jason is very multifaceted, um, known very much for his art and for you know being a a singer and and songwriter 
and having you know, great bands like Poetry of the Dead. But he's also a lot of people, you know, may not know, you know, as much of his acting side. And, and he's worked behind the scenes on lots of uh, film productions and, and has a oh, lot yeah. of knowledge in that area. So, I mean, so Jason brings a lot to the table. And uh, then Stephanie Lanham, I was floored um, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, I guess you had, you had a brief call in where you uh, let us know that that was like her first major acting role. I was like, good job, yeah. Stephanie, because she really did a, did a good job. And, and so, yeah, she's a, and she, she's a multifaceted creative herself. Uh, but yeah, just shined in the acting role. And so, I mean, yeah, you had a, a small, but, but a very uh, multi-talented team around you. Every single one was, is a multi-talented creative. And so that was I'm, a, I'm, a, a good bunch. I'm super thankful for all the people that I had um, with me. Not only did they like do I mean, a, a killer job because on set, I mean, I'm really just kind of there to interpret the scripts. That's really, was, I was there for and help with sound. I held the mic. I did the back, you know, cause literally just the four of us at Stephanie's place, like just the four of us on, on, on set. But, you know, I learned a lot from Jason and John and Stephanie did a great job. She was trying to absorb everything. She really, she really was like invested in, into the role, into the project. And so I'm, I'm super thankful for all the people that obviously worked on it. And not only that, for the faith and the trust that they had in me uh, to be like the, you know, almost sole writer of our, you know, production thing going on. So I'm yeah. Very and, uh, now, Hallowed Hills Entertainment, um, do you know uh, what, what's the story? Because this is, I think, the first – is this the first project from Hallowed Hills? And um, who are the principals in it? So are you one of the um, official members of it? It's kind of hard. It's, okay, so we all kind of had our own little brands walking into this project. Um, you know, John obviously had ARC. Uh, Hallowed Hills mm-hmm. was mostly a Jason – uh, brand branding and of course as in the writing and getting into that with the podcasting and stuff I had I had Night Raven and Night Raven was really focusing on the stuff that me and Jason were planning on doing together uh, so when we got together we're like listen guys we got like three brands <laughs> do we need three <laughs> brands really well, so we kind of had a little, little powwow and we've kind of compartmentalized uh, what all the branding really does the production stuff of like the actual productions the arc stuff because john has the cameras does the sound that's the arc side putting out the short films and stuff will be under the hallowed hills if we do things um more live like uh something you and i had discussed before if we get some of that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff off the ground that will be under night raven nice oh and yes very interested in that, by the way, and but yeah, it's yeah, that's that that that's a that's a, sm- a good the right thing to do, yeah, because you don't want to have too much confusion on the branding side, and um, but yeah, I was just curious as to who all the the principals were because it is a, a, a new produ- new entertainment company, so I thought that was kind of a, a fun thing too, yeah. It's pretty much just it's us. It's it's yeah. It's the uh, the, the three to four of us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Holly, I don't know how many projects? Yeah, yeah. No, you guys had not decided whether or not to, you know, to enter, uh, you know, your project in, in film festivals yet for official like juries and awards considerations. But yeah, we definitely, I definitely want to be able to at least exhibit this uh, next year because, because yeah, this is a this is a real st- this is a, a great story that that course came out of last year. So yeah, this, this or this past yeah. year, I should say. But uh, I definitely need to exhibit this. I'm telling you right now that with the response you're getting, I mean the proof's in the pudding, right? And mm-hmm. it hasn't been out long, and you're already up to almost ten thousand, you know, and views. I mean, so that's yeah. amazing. I mean, that really is over, overwhelming ever, positive response. Yeah. yeah, Jason was mad oh. because this guy, like this one project, has more views now than <laughs> every <laughs> single one of his music videos. Yes, that's what I'm saying, you know. Like, I think it's, his, it's, his video wow. with the most is, like, about 3,000, and it's, like, eight years old. Uh, this has been that's up for awesome. about a month, and we're about to hit 10. Yeah. And, and I mean, some of his, like, born, 
his video mourn is just oh it's so um it's like an art film but yet it's oh, a yeah. music video Oh you know, yeah, J- Jason's music that. videos have always been super killer. Um, yeah. I think they've all been shot by uh, Herschel's on. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, when when you put a camera in Herschel's hands, I mean, magic oh, yeah. happens automatic. Oh yeah, that, that's that's yep. instant. Yeah, Herschel is is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything from <laughs> from uh, just. The, Top tier camera work to to uh, just uh, superb uh, uh, Frank Sinatra style music reviews. The guy guy can do everything. <laughs> and he baits. It's crazy. Herschel baits. Yes. Yeah. He baits. <laughs> and he baits. Holly he does perked. all those wonderful things. And he baits. It's and he Holly baits. just perked up. Yeah, Holly just perked up at yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He paints. He he does photography. He does all kinds of neat little things. Very no, it bakes very like breads and muffins and cinnamon rolls. Yeah. You know, something with the cinnamon oh, shack. I, I don't know. Bag. I know. He he had it's, a little like um, a, a, a what did he get them like a little truck or something? He yeah, went the did shack, some kind of fair called. or something. I think. Still does it. I I don't know all the details on that one, but I mean, if you're not. Everyone that I've mentioned, people need to just go find them on all their socials and see all the incredible yeah. stuff that happens around me. And the beautiful thing is that it's all inspiring. It's it's inspired me to to write in film, to actually say, hey, let's go make a thing and let's do the stuff. And I'm surrounded by incredibly talented, creative people who are open and welcoming. And I, again can't be I, I i i can't thank the people around me enough yeah it's not always the no. easiest thing to find in the creative world because sometimes you know you run into different little cliques and territorial types and you know, of course there's always going to be egos in the art world so how did did you um come to meet the the folks that you know you're working with now that you know have a great chemistry and are uh you know very uh win-win sort of people what was your path to, to connecting with everybody you know, if you want to give us a little history. Through most people that I've mentioned, I met through Jason. And ironically, Jason just happened to live two blocks from the gas station I worked at. That's crazy. Cool. That, that's it. So Jason would come into the store every Sunday morning. Like he'd have a show or practice on Saturdays. He'd come to the store on Sunday morning. And he was the dude with the long hair on Sunday mornings that came to the store. After a while, I found out nice. that he had some mutual friends. Uh, of mine that were did local music and stuff and did shows. And so I, you know, we go to these mutual outings together and we came friends since then. Yeah. Well, I knew, yeah. I knew you two were very tight. Yeah. I was interested as to how, how it all, but yeah, that, that would make sense. <laughs> yeah. But that C and J. Long haired dude is awesome. and bought coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost brings to mind like Holly. We could uh, uh, can almost envision like something like the movie Clerks, you know, with Dewan Jason coming in. Oh my in. gosh! Right? Oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, we do have some future. We we have a lot more uh, film ideas. I mean, while while right. while well, I go. rather would not be in front of the camera, I'm more behind the scenes guy. Well, I mean, can I can get somebody to stand in for me. You could be Silent Bob. I'd be Thanks. like an off-screen character. I'd rather be like <laughs> the voice, the one that's off off screen, just a voice in the background. I'll play that role. I have a face for radio. I'll I'll do that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. I'll do. If you need a very mean large nun, I'm your woman. I'll I'll see if I can squeeze that into a, I, I could play a I'll, very large mean nun. Very well. Yeah, Amy McCorkle <laughs> can vouch for that. <laughs> she can't. I can't well, we have a We have a future project. I don't think there's a room, there's a space for a nun in that one, but we may have some some stuff down the road for you. Yeah. Out there. We may have some stuff down the Tell road. Me when we have We have this one idea. I'll I'll share it. He'll he'll be mad. I don't care. Um so we want <laughs> people to come to this channel and and we're like, okay, so we have this project and we have the follow-up project 
uh, called Companion that we're going that we're um, in the start the beginnings of. But then we're like, well, what else are we going to do on the channel? Like we have this YouTube channel, and we don't want to put out one project and have everyone forget about us. So we're thinking about doing a series of shorts. And the way I have this idea at first will be it'll start off like a news broadcast, and it'll be someone telling a crazy story about something that happened, and then do like a five- or ten-minute little short about the situation we just discussed in the beginning of the news broadcast. Very cool. That'd be a good web series so he's, concept. He's Jeez. got he's got some character ideas he wants to play with. So I'm like, all right, well we need like a consistent format that people can rely on that will, you know, mm-hmm. be some consistency that people can can vouch for. And so we thought about that and we haven't had a sit down meeting about that one yet, but we discussed it over the phone. Like I said, Jason wouldn't want me to talk about it, but I'm going to. <laughs> well, first, well, first, first you got to see if they deliver on the pizza party. Then, then if you see if they were sincere That's about that, true. you'll know that. Then you'll know that they're 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 worthy of of continuing your work with. <laughs> so. I need my pizza party. <laughs> right. Right. You don't get a script yes. until I get my pizza party. But of course, they're going to give you the pizza party like in a week or two, and they're like, "All right, now where's our script?" I'm like, "No, hold on." Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Scripts take a little bit longer to write than pizza mm-hmm. takes to get delivered. And not crappy right. pizza, not greasy pizza. You want good pizza. Right. Yeah. I mean, good, I'm a South Bend little kid. I'll I'll take some I'll take some okay pizza, especially if I'm not paying yeah. for it. It's fine. Oh, me too. So, yeah, let me free pizza. Let me better. ask you. What's your favorite toppings? What What is your ultimate pizza? And is it a New York style or is it a deep dish? Okay, so I'm not going to fight the people who say that deep dish pizza is not a real pizza. <laughs> I'm not going to fight them. Um, I do like a thin New York style uh, pizza. You can't go wrong with a basic pepperoni. Um, I make a smothered chicken dish, right? That consists of chicken, uh, mushrooms, onions, and green peppers. And so honestly, that's my favorite pizza is a pizza with chicken. Onions, green peppers, and mushrooms. Nice. That, that's nice. Good. Yeah, we. Sounds yeah, good. I'm, Sounds real good. I'm with Duan. Uh, yeah, anything New York style is. I mean, that's where my heart is on pizza. I mean, you can find a good, true New York style uh, pizzeria. Jump on it, and and basic okay. is is great. I mean, just some straight up pepperoni in that style. Delicious, and but it's Holly, the more I, I, the more and more I hear about the the foodie talents in in our creative circles, and, and learning that uh, about Herschel, you know, being a, a baking expert, and I already know that Duan is a is a foodie and and into uh, uh, the the, uh, the the culinary arts as well. Um, we need to do this in an imaginarium, have a bake off, and have uh, some kind of food thing because that would benefit all of our attendees. <laughs> I'll have <to> love that. <laughs> we need to do something there. <laughs> I can't okay, remember hey, who said it. For a while. <laughs> I can't remember who said it, but someone was trying to get me to compete against Morgan Hazelwood and her meatballs. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> people, I'm not trying to compete with anyone. First of all, how do you all even know I cook? I don't even make meatballs. Like, why y'all trying to put me on the spot like that? That's not cool. But now, if she challenges me, if she was to challenge me, I'd, I'd think about it. I think, like, But she does make pretty good meatballs. I don't really know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. They're famous. And, and I never got to try them yet. So you better believe because she'll have to make them for Imaginarium next year or she will be mauled I, by many that's, people. Because that's all I, I hear that. is about more than- Meatballs. That's why so, I went to the party because I was just, Sabata was like, well, "Hey, you've got to go to this party and get some meatballs." And I'm like, "Okay, well, you're cool. gonna you're gonna have to accompany me. And we'll we'll go. I'll go with you. We'll go. I want to try okay. that meatballs. I'll I will make sure yeah, I find you. I'll tell Morgan me off somewhere. Usually I'm with Jay running around and we get in all kinds of antics. So oh, I geez. will try the meatballs first. <laughs> right. Oh boy. <laughs> trying to trying to keep Jason in the control is 
is an adventure. That no, is it's an adventure says, all in its own right. Stephanie says, I'm the devil on Jason's shoulder at Imaginary. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't need one. He doesn't need one. Yeah, I was going to say, he doesn't need one. <laughs> but He's I the do devil like on the all of our shoulders. But I do like this evolution of the room party suddenly having this these top tier spreads because we've always talked about the per Bostet what? publications room party, so they have these amazing food spreads, and now I'm hearing about it happening at these other room parties, and yeah, pretty soon, uh, yeah, nobody's going to need to to eat much uh, coming into Imaginarium because the room parties are going to be so fantastic. You know what you do? You do like a late. <laughs> Do a late panel and just have everyone like just bring a dish and then like we'll just like there I'll judge it. I'll just I'll sign up for that. Oh I'll yeah, sign I'll, I'll sign up. <laughs> I will too. <laughs> that sounds good. Oh just man, have Morgan yeah. bring some meatballs down. I forget which party it was. It's not even the per best that party, but they had someone had some like really good spinach dip. That was killer. So, oh, I, mean, I love spinach artichoke dip, there, and I make it. There is some competition. Okay. There's some, so do I. There's a competition there. Uh, Holly, Holly, get a hold of Paul Hollywood and see if they can do a one-off like uh, Imaginarian Bake Off special, like the Great I British Bake Off. I will you know Paul Hollywood, them beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> that would be awesome. But, uh, yeah, I've been floored. Uh, just in what I've experienced the last year or two and the, the cuisine at these room parties. <laughs> I mean, it's really been yeah, going next level. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. I had not uh, heard about uh, Morgan's stuff, but that, yeah, it does not surprise me. So, yeah, that's going to be on my list for next year. That sounds oh, good. Oh, you guys good. think I wrote a cookbook. <laughs> All this food talk, <laughs> you think I wrote a cookbook. There you go. So how what do you think was the most challenging going from like writing the cookbook or writing prose or poetry or you know everything that you wrote what was the hardest burdens or battles you had to get over to do screenwriting what was your biggest hurdles format is one uh because when you're telling a story you know a once you know when you go on once upon a time there's an expert, you know, there's kind of this, you just, you just tell the story as it happens based on what you're writing, you know, POV, things like that. But when you're doing screenwriting, there's a certain way you convey action happening. There's a certain way that you're conveying it. And so when you're sitting down and you're writing it, you don't want to put too much here. You don't want to put not enough there. And it's a matter of a format. And if it's not formatted right, then people just ignore it. It's, Formatting was my biggest thing. And beyond that, my short stories um, have never been, like, super detailed in description. I always try to keep things pretty, like, broad enough. Like, it's detailed enough that you know what's happening, but it's never been, like, overpowered with detail. Uh, One of my favorite authors is Dan Brown. If you've read any of Dan Brown's books, Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, the sort, you know that he puts in a ton of detail and description uh-huh. of things, with description of art pieces and ancient towns, and all. he goes so deep into it all. It all means something. There's a reason for him to put it in there. So, you know, it's not like you're just wasting your time, but whew, sometimes it's, it's a lot to get through before you get to why it means something. For me, I try to avoid doing that, and I try to find, like, a happy medium. I have this analogy called uh, the blue wall. And with the blue wall, when you're writing a story, you can say the wall is blue, right? You know the wall there, you know it's blue. Or you can say that the wall is an exquisite shade of topaz or whatever and go into unnecessary detail. Or, depending on the situation of the story, you may not even have to mention that the wall is actually there. Maybe if you just said you're indoors, you kind of assume the wall is present. So I've used the analogy of the blue wall to talk about how much detail is in the story. So my walls are moderately blue. And I think when you're writing a screenplay, when you're writing a screenplay, you have to put a little bit more blue paint on that wall. Sometimes a couple different shades, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely does. Yeah, it's always a, I think a bit of, a bit of a, a challenge sometimes for for a prose writer to come over and write screenplays because it's a, a, a very much a, a distilled writing form. You know, where you're really getting down to, you know, the key things that need to be, you know, to set the scene and and you know definitely a, a heavier focus on dialogue rather than description up by far. And you know, it's definitely a, a, a totally different style of writing. So. Yeah, sometimes it's yeah. tough for those for a novelist to, to make that conversion over to it. But yeah, because you have the temptation to want to put too much into it. Uh, but a good screenplay, I mean, yeah, actually has a a very very lean kind of uh, lean kind of vibe to it, and it, it gets really to the to the point quick. Yeah, it gets to the heart of things, and that was one of the things uh, I think me and Carol had actually talked about this mm-hmm. at some point. And it's just like when you go into writing screenplay, it's just so – it's really just very basic. It's very lean. You know, you're like you walk into a room, and there's a this, a this, a this, and a this, mm-hmm. and then this happens. You walk here, you go there, you do this, you say that, and there you are. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, yep, that's it. <laughs> I don't have to say anything else. Everything else is in the dialogue or, you know, some other person in the, in the production process deals with that and – you're like, okay, well, what am I supposed to say? Cool. Versus everything is just on the page otherwise. And it's just, it's such a different way of shaping your brain when it comes to how to yes. get your ideas out. Yeah, I know Carol would have a, definitely some thoughts on that because not only was she, you know, coming from uh, the novel world, but she was also uh, doing an adaptation of her novel. Uh, homecoming to murder and uh, so yeah so she was not only coming over from that style of writing but also working with her own adaptation of her own novel so yeah she yeah she really had to had to definitely break out of that uh yeah that that's that mode of writing and and go into the zone that you're talking about so yeah it's not not always easy but yeah, that is the hard thing to do because when I got into when I was trying to do the screenwriting, I was trying to practice, and so I wrote this short story series uh, called Such Is Life, and I was trying to write episode one of Such Is Life as a screenplay, and that didn't get very far. I didn't get off the first page, the first little action box. I'm like, no, not yet. I can't. I can't convert it. Like it's. It's weird. It's just it's like changing format. It's, it's hard to convert. I I kudos to anyone who's written their own adaptation. Kudos to Carol. It's uh, I once was uh, I want. I once did an adaptation, not of my own novel, but I was brought aboard to uh, uh, take a nonfiction book and, and adapt it. And yeah, it's not a, not an easy task. Yeah, to distill exactly what needs to go in to make it a good narrative, uh, you know, in a in a screenplay format. Because of course, books and film work differently, and you know, and, and so you have to find that that nice little linear core, you know, that really helps a, a story flow in film. And it's not not always easy, um, you know. That's why my you know, like when I see something like Game of Thrones, you know, how it adapted with that you know very ensemble style of writing, you know, it's cool. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive, you know, to be able to jump all over the place and and still keep the story flowing. But yeah, it's definitely a, a screenplay. Screenwriting is a, is an art in itself, and and that's a you know big reason why we you know really put a spotlight on it ourselves at the convention because yeah a lot of people you know don't uh, i think uh, appreciate screenwriting as much as maybe some of the other spheres of writing but it's definitely uh yeah definitely its own art and and you have to really work hard to to master it well, i think you I can think... kind of lose yourself in some of your style when you do it i was yeah. so if you if you've read such as life um it's kind of comedic. It's it's intended to be sort of light and funny. It's it's a short, such okay. So the story is about it surrounds this kid named Zach, and Zach lives in this town called Kingston, and everyone is weird except for him. <laughs> and this the first episode, the first episode involves him being at work, and then there's this, his boss gets into this really weird fight, and that sets the tone for the rest of the series. It's it's the weird it's it's I don't even know how I came up with it, but when you're writing it in 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 that you know once upon a time style, you you can add your comedy and how you phrase things, how you do your description, how you 
you know, narrate. And some of that stuff gets lost in screenwriting because unless you have a narrator actually saying something, none of it's equally conveyed on screen. So it, it's mm-hmm. you have to change so many other things up. It's a totally different thing. Right. No, oh, it is. And, and, I, and I, yeah, I have great admiration uh, for that. But what are um, – yeah, just getting into more of your background, um, what are um, some of the uh, filmmakers and or screenwriters specifically that, that have uh, been ones that, that have influenced you, inspired you, or ones you really enjoy? And like I said, you can take either either or, uh, filmmakers or screenwriters. Oh, I'm a huge fan of West K. So specific screenwriters and filmmakers like – I guess you can say like Wes Craven. I do love Wes Craven. Yeah. Screen was a very influential. Um, mm-hmm. And it was it Kevin Williams? I think wrote mm-hmm. uh, Scream. Mm-hmm. I've actually had a chance to sit down with that script, and it's written really, really, really well. And to watch how that how um, the relationship between um, directors and writers and how the director takes what's written and chances it's, it's I mean you can't go wrong with Wes Craven um, and then of course some of my favorite movies like Back to the Future and I'm really influenced by Back to the Future the, the Bobs and I can't remember their last name because I always remember them as the Bobs <laughs> there was two guys named Bob that worked on Back to the Future back in 85 and that movie has been a huge influence on me because I've sat down and read that script a thousand times for Back to the Future Part One. I've watched it a whole bunch of times. I think Barbara's in the go with it. Yeah. I've watched yeah. Back to the Future Part Two so many times in my life. And then she yeah. does this giraffe trivia every Tuesday. And she <laughs> had this question. She had this question about how, like, a giraffe appearance or some kind of draft thing in Back to the Future Part 2. Here I am, confident as all get out. Like, there's been no giraffe references in Hill Valley, California. There's been no giraffes in that movie. Boy, she set me straight. She yeah. set me straight. It was the That's skirt. Awesome. It's just a skirt. There's yeah, giraffes I'm, on, I'm it's giraffes on a skirt. I'm going to have to ask Miss Barbara to, to, to uh, tell me about this. <laughs> Well, so yeah, like, that would be. A, a, she does the trivia, and it's just like Lorraine is wearing a skirt when she picks up her dress for the dance in Back to the Future Part Two, and there's giraffes in the skirt. And I've seen that movie a thousand and one times, and there's I saw no giraffes. I've never seen a single giraffe. Me neither. But then she points it out. She puts the picture up. I'm like, well, I'll mm-hmm. be a giraffe yeah. poodle skirt. She said, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. And, and it's one of those things that you would never, ever, ever notice unless you know your whole world revolves around giraffes. Which now <laughs> mind us too, so I'm doing it because now I find yeah. myself after that question, I find myself every Tuesday waiting for that trivia question. I'm like, I'm going to redeem myself. I'm going to redeem myself <laughs> on giraffe trivia. Now, giraffe. now I'm going to start. I'm going to start watching for giraffe imagery in all films now, so I, 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 dis, so I won't disappoint Barbara in the future. <laughs> and the Bobs you're thinking of, by the way, are Michael Robert Gale or Bob Gale and Robert Bob Zemeckis. Gale. That's all Robert Zemeckis. Zemeckis. I didn't want to say it wrong. Two Bobs. Yeah. Gale, yes. Gale and Zemeckis. Mm-hmm. Yes. And like, yep. that's been fantastic. I think Tommy mentioned Serpent in the Rainbow. And completely. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Underappreciated movie. Oh, it's I can't. I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about that. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Intense. Was, that movie I remember. was so so good. So there so was good. no mm-hmm. giraffes, right? Or were there? Were there? <laughs> were there giraffes? <laughs> I don't believe there was any giraffes <laughs> in the Serpent in the Rainbow. But at the same <laughs> time, I don't even know anymore. I can't even trust myself. With that, I was saying, are are were they? We don't know. <laughs> yeah. I said there was no draft yeah. in Back to the Future Part Two, but I was wrong about that. Well, I would have said that too because I never noticed that. 
I just seen a poodle yeah. start. I'm going to have to yeah. watch Lord of the Rings with more scrutiny now and see if any giraffes are in the background of that one. Now. I'm looking for giraffes everywhere. Barbara has me looking for giraffes everywhere now. Every movie I look that, for giraffes. Everywhere that's what happens. Draft, in, they're everywhere. You get, you get to know Barbara and you start, you know, the, the, your world starts centering oh, on I giraffes. Chat. I do see them. I see them in memes. I'll see news articles. And I always send it to her. There was one about... Well, back, somebody found uh, there's an albino giraffe, and they're, they're like, they're extremely rare. I had never heard of them nor seen them, but, you know, there's albinos could pop up in anything. But it was so cool because, I mean, it's just all white, you know. And she said, yeah, she had uh, – somebody else had sent her that, and she had read the story about it. I forget where it was, but, yeah, a complete albino giraffe. Beautiful. Look it up, people. I mean, it's, it's absolutely oh. – Beautiful. I got one. I'm going to impress Barbara right now. Um, La- the Last of Us. There's a scene where Pedro Pascal and, and the, the, the girl he's protecting uh, run into uh, some giraffes in a, in a in an area that's in the, kind of like a, one of, one of the, the decayed cities. Remember, Holly? They, in what remember? movie? The Last of Us, the zombie uh, flick or, or series okay. with oh, Pedro Pascal. Oh, yeah. You remember they run into yes. the giraffes? Mm-hmm. Yes. There are giraffes she in that one. She loves that scene. She loved that mm-hmm. scene. Because uh-huh. I said so. that's like, you know, she was talking about she's been to Africa and actually ate, like, with the giraffes, you know. They would poke mm-hmm. their head in and stuff. And and that's what they did. And I said, oh, my gosh. It's like what Barbara Evers was talking about. <laughs> yep. It was great. That was a great scene. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I didn't want her to think I didn't notice me. that. <laughs> this is the thing about me. There's, there's almost so little about me to be cool, but there's I always oh, find myself oh. in either really cool situations or surrounded by really cool people. And I think that was kind of the influence of Such as Life, because all this stuff happens with my main character, Zach. All the stuff happens around him, but none of the stuff is really actually happening to him, but he's having to interact in this world where all this crazy stuff's happening around him. There's there's like the 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 crazy fight that his boss gets into, which gives who has put them into a nervous breakdown. There is his friend goes missing. Um a whole bunch of stuff goes on with his mom. It's the whole thing. I've written eight episodes of this and they're all on my website. Nice. And that's nice. kind of how my life is. That's how my life is. Like <laughs> everything happens around me. Um, I remember you guys did the episode of Star Chamber shortly after Imaginarium. And there was like one episode mm-hmm. where you talked to like three or four different people and everyone had a story that involved me. Mm-hmm. I just kind of happened to be around. Yes. Everyone had a story yes. that was that. That's true. That is true. Like everybody seen you or or did something with you or had an experience mm-hmm. with at Imaginarium and I'm like this is hilarious. We we talked yeah, about yeah. the Wednesday night because we always get there Wednesday you know to get things right. set up. Wednesday night we had the Denny's trip no yeah. IHOP uh, IHOP, IHOP, IHOP trip IHOP, IHOP. We, mm-hmm. us three walked over to IHOP and, and had, had some dinner and that was so Good much fun him. and you helped us unload Thank goodness you were there. <laughs> oh God, yeah, thank God. <laughs> and of course, that like, definitely helped. And of course, like I'm there, I'm there with Carol and C- Carol. I'm gonna tell you this, like, so when when the nominations came out and and we were both listed as finalists, I saw Carol on there and I'm congratulating her, and she saw me on there and mm-hmm. she's congratulating me, and then we like. I'm encouraging her, and then she's encouraging mm-hmm. me, and that that really like the. Mm-hmm. The like instant connection I've had with Carol has been like an amazing thing. It's always I can and, always and trust what, and what, her. Too. And what happened that I, night, <laughs> or that Saturday <laughs> night? <laughs> we both walked you and Carol, pretty cool. you and Carol both both walked up to the front. <laughs> That's right. And that it was, was great. Awesome. And I was, I was so happy, and I was glad to be there. I was glad to be there to help uh, with Dacre. I was glad to be there. Um, to witness and encourage the chair throwing. I was 
Oh, that my was God, on the yeah. The TBS. That was yeah. great. I'm the famous so, uh, so ch- chair throwing. It was, yeah, it was so great. Tommy and, and Barbara and – yeah, it set off a cascade of chair throwers at the at the reading. I I, I left the reading. After, very after Barbara did it, I, it was fantastic. Tommy was reading, and it was fantastic. I told people, I told Jason, oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm going on there. I'm just going to put everybody over <laughs> because uh-huh. everything comes back to wrestling. Since everything comes back to wrestling, <laughs> there's a term for when one wrestler, you know, does a job and helps get the other guy popular with the crowd it's called putting them over so i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna go on this show i'm just gonna put everybody over and so tommy is about to read and he throws his chair throws off everyone i'm like oh yeah this is good this is that was good. awesome i was like oh, tommy reads yeah, his amazing there. story i was there tommy reads his amazing story he would have recorded he picks that. the chair up I I had my camera with me, but I didn't think to record it because when Barbara goes next, she puts the straight up the chair. She goes, I'm not going to throw the chair. I'm not going to throw the chair. And I'm like, do it. Throw the chair. Because in my head, I'm picturing a whole wrestling match. I'm like, throw the chair. Get a table. It's great. And then she's like, you're going to throw a chair? Boom. And she throws the chair. And I'm just like, yes. The that influence awesome. of the moon is dangerous. And I should not be allowed to be around other people or to influence with anyone, but I'm so thankful that I do. And it was a fantastic moment. And they, and me and Barbara have talked since then. And uh-huh. me and Sandy have gotten closer since then. And, like, that was such a bonding moment for everyone. Mm-hmm. It was it spectacular. Was I, I actually was fortunate enough to see all this. I actually was out and about during that time, and I saw the, the uh, Tommy and Barbara's readings, and, and I was, I'm like, this, yeah, next year you're going to see, like, twice the audience at the readings now that word has gotten out about the chair throwing. Everybody's going to wonder what they're going to do this time. If you see me walk into that room. You see me walk in that room. I'm my. In, I'm apparently very influential, and I never understood why. And I know I shouldn't. I know I never use my powers for good. So, <laughs> if you see me walk into that room, beware of of what I might encourage someone else to do. Yeah, all we gotta do is get Shrewsbury in on that, and you'd have a just a spectacular show because Shrewsbury is known for doing these crazy things during readings so yeah we need to we need to get all the, everyone together next year <laughs> let's let's see That's what that, royal rumble uh, like oh. rest, wwe style Everything there goes back to the swing. Mm-hmm. too much Big yeah and you and, you, 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 and i n- notice you do have you do have a great interest in wrestling so yeah, I'd love yeah, that for you to share a little bit about that side of you because i i noticed that a lot uh, in, in, in some of the stuff you talk about and focus on. Yeah, you're well, one of the things I have coming up, one of the things I have coming up is a, hopefully if I can get everything together, is a new podcast called Moon Equals Wrestling. That's why the name on um, Walk Talk Radio changed because I want to do the show here. And I love professional wrestling because it is, everything a creative person could possibly want. It's the ultimate theater. And you take away all the the naysays about professional wrestling, all the stereotypes about professional wrestling, it's all theater. You have these athletes who are basically actors. They play a character. They have stories that they tell. They have to tell the story both through narration and through the actions in the ring. There's the storytelling through a match. And if you watch enough professional wrestling, you can see how they'll tell a story in the ring. And it can be something as simple as 10 minute match. In the first two minutes of the match, one guy gets thrown out of the ring and lands weird on his leg. Right now his leg hurts. So now is the story of how can the guy wrestle on this leg? But then you know the character and you know that his finishing maneuver is a super kick. So now his leg hurts. How can he finish the guy off if he can't use his leg? So now the other guy is obviously aiming for the leg. And the other guy, the the guy with the hurt leg now has to change up everything. And he has to come from underneath and come from behind and, and try to overcome. And then you have things like championships and teams and whether the team is getting along it's the ultimate theater then you have the entrances with the music and then 
the music tells you everything. And you can have a character change by just changing their music. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. There's so many different layers to professional wrestling. And it's it's the ultimate theater. And that's why I love it so much. And funny thing, the, the expression that I use, everything comes back to wrestling. Because when you talk to me, I can almost turn everything and use an example from professional wrestling. And so I've said that so many times, everything comes back to wrestling. Jason was like, when are you going to put that on a T-shirt? So I did. No kidding. <laughs> so you there did. You yes, you did. <laughs> That's going to be a great Which I wore, last year. I wore it this year. You did wear one. Get, you did. Get, get Carrie Canetzi in your podcast because uh, she is – she actually started her path to pro wrestling out of Imaginarium. She had talked to John Cosper for a while um, a couple of years ago, and that set her on mm-hmm. the road to where she is now, and she's actually – uh, competing. I mean, she really recently had some, some I'm cool, so cool matches, and she's I'm doing so great. I'm so proud of her. It's, it's she, awesome. She I talked to John match. last year. I talked to John last year. I talked to Carrie. Met Carrie last year. We talked. We've been cool. Mm-hmm. There's actually another fun Carrie story. Um, well, a story she's connected to. And when she started wrestling, she messaged me and told me about it. So the whole thing with her training promo videos and stuff she was sending me and, and, and updating me. I'm just like, I, can't, I couldn't be more proud of her. She's doing mm-hmm. such a great job. And oh, yeah. I, 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 I watched her recent I'm, match, and she's fantastic, man. She is. Well, the, 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 the whole body transformation. I mean, Carrie was like my size at one time. And oh, yeah. you look at her next to me now. I mean, my God. I mean, is it? It's a whole transformation. She lost all that weight and turned it into muscle. I mean, she is. And now turn that muscle into a career, like a million dollar machine. That's the million dollar machine now. We have to respect respect her name. That's what she calls herself. She's the million dollar machine now. It's it's fantastic, and I love it. I am so happy. So yeah, I would love to talk to John. I have every intention of talking to Gary. Yeah, yeah, John. John's a not a encyclopedia for sure. Yeah, he's got a lot of good yeah. books out on, on wrestling. Yeah, I, I love John. Yeah, Cosper. we met on Twitter. Great, great guy. Yeah, we had actually met on Twitter, and then we were both coming to Imaginarium, so I met him in person at Imaginarium. Not this year, but last year. Nice. Oh, right. Nice. Yeah, he had a schedule conflict or something this year that prevented him from coming, but I think he's clear for next year, as far as I, I know. But yeah, he's he, he's fantastic, and yeah, there's so many good yeah. books on on wrestling and, and yeah, he, we had him on uh, the show talking about that, but yeah, that's, <laughs> it's so cool how the synergy happened with him and Carrie and then Carrie moving on to, you know, doing what she's doing now. And now she's on the yeah. road uh, in professional wrestling and, and uh, wow. I mean, just cool. I mean, and yeah, she's so fun. I'm, I'm yeah, she so helps, happy for her. Like, yeah. She helps at our award yeah. ceremonies for the last two years. She's helped uh, give out the awards and yeah, she just has such a presence. I mean, she's got amazing physicality. I mean, yeah, just a real presence. And this year she sat with Shrewsbury. So that was, it was like just the dynamic duo. Those two sitting together yeah. out and creating it. We <laughs> have, the show. there's this, there's this running pun that also stemmed from a, an Imaginarium panel that you guys had, not this year, but last year. There was a presentation you guys had. Um, it was a nerd's guide to erotica. Yeah, creating that one with, with, with my helper, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not my genre. I don't write it. I don't read it. But my friend did. And so she wanted to go to that panel. So we went to the presentation and – if you ever get that, I forgot who her what her name was, but if you ever get her back, I'm going to go to the, every single thing she does because that panel was hilarious. It was fantastic. And she started it off by reading, um, it was a passage from something called Winkler by Giles Cohen, right? And it's this mm-hmm. annoying, um, long run-on sentence. It's, uh, I, I can't describe it. Um, it's a family show. And um <laughs> not really. <laughs> I know. I it's funnier if I say it's a family show. But <laughs> so it's it's so it's so wrong on so many different levels. Like it doesn't even inaccurately descriptive 
but it's a whole bunch of mess, and it ends with the phrase, like Zorro. <laughs> so yeah, like, like me and Sila and a couple of other people who are in this in this Oh, I remember now. I know what you're talking we're in, about. We're in this presentation, and so we just kept looking at each other like, like Zorro. Because it's uh, it's funnier. Okay, so if anyone's going to go find it, it's Giles Cohen, uh, C-O-H-E-N. It's from a passage called Winkler. Just look up like Zorro in Google, and you'll find it. And then when you, you find it, read it. But don't just read it. Read it out loud. Like, I want you to verbalize the sentence. Because it's really it's like, a, like a run-on sentence. It's funnier if you try to say it out loud because your brain's trying to make sense of it, and it can't. So when I'm like, I want to commemorate this event on a T-shirt, because I sell T-shirts on my website. Nice. <laughs> so it literally just says, blah, 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 nice. blah, 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 like Zorro. And it's the funniest thing. Nice. And nice. to give credit to the presenter of that workshop, that would be Jen Barnes. Yeah, she, yeah. she's I knew awesome. This was with JB. I knew it was JB, but yeah. I knew I was going to get the name wrong. Jen Barnes. Jen she Barnes. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So if you get her back, I'm, I'm going to watch anything she does because that was – Oh yeah. she didn't have a slideshow, and I kind of wish she did. Um, it was a better sex ed class than my sex ed class. <laughs> <laughs> it really yeah, was. She's, like, yeah, she's a, a very, very good writer too. And uh, But, yeah, I hope she – I hope she's able to make it in 2024. Um, but yeah, no, every every year, yeah, yeah. Some people can make it, some people can't. But I hope she definitely comes back. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Because yeah, she definitely gave some some great great stuff at, 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 in the programming. I would tell yeah, people talk about that panel. They enjoyed it so much. They mm-hmm. had so much fun. Everybody yeah. did. Well, what ended up happening, and I feel bad for her for a second because she tells. She reads that as an example of bad erotica. And then before she can continue with the rest of her presentation, we just – I'm sitting there trying to watch from the back because, again, I'm just kind of here as an observer. Everyone's like, wait a minute, hold on, one more time. What did he did? What? It doesn't work that way. And there's a whole – for like 15 extra minutes, we've taken over discussing how just insane that passage was. And then, of course, mm-hmm. she's trying to explain how Araga is written inaccurate, well, be, be inaccurately. So as it's being written inaccurate, she's like, well, let's just talk about what the parts are, what the parts do, how they interact, we'll talk more about kinks and all this, that, and the third. And so it was a very yeah. informative class that if you wrote this genre, that it would be a super helpful mm-hmm. uh, course. But, and it was set, but when you set the tone with such an insanely written passage, off the rails from the jump. And I'm like, I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah. <This is laughs> yep. Wild. And there's, there's a Barbara reason why that – there's a reason why that one is 18 and up. Yes. <laughs> oh, very, oh, yeah. very vivid yeah, panel. <laughs> I'm and up for a reason. <laughs> yeah, lots, lots of very uh, detailed content. <laughs> but like but I said, yeah, she's, you know, just like, just like with Zach, you know, uh, Zach was based off me, uh, very briefly, uh, to a point, and, and again, while all this stuff happens around me, none of it happens to me. None of this stuff is about me. The, all the stories that we've told this whole time, none of these things are like ultimately about me. And that's kind of my life. All this stuff happens around me, and I am a sponge to absorb the stories and the events that happen around me. And that's kind of like the biggest influence to all of my writing is I see something happen around me. Or I hear of a situation that happened to like this person, or I witness something happen to that person, and I'm like, mm-hmm. well, what would happen if it happened a different way? What would happen if the story, if the person went left instead of going right? Um, a friend of mine works with uh, children who are like wards of the state, and she was telling me the situation that happened to um, one of the kids that they were about to take in, 
And I'm hearing this scenario, and I'd rather not go into it uh, just because of the nature of it. But I was thinking about the situation. I'm like, I can only imagine what's happening with that kid's family. And Mm -hmm. if you hear that the person with the accusation is actually innocent, how do you emotionally to normal from that position? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was just having that conversation earlier today. And, like, that's something I've been, like, spinning in my head all day. And I'm like, can I write this? Can I write this? Can I write this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it it was very similar last year. Uh, earlier this year, I guess, this summer when I was at Imaginarium, it was me, it was um, a whole bunch of people in the car. It was me, Morgan, Sako, Sabata, uh, S.A. Bradley, all in the car getting ice cream. And <laughs> that's that's an adventure on its own, right? <laughs> you can just picture the five of us going to go get ice cream. That's a and that, that's a <laughs> Oh, boy, is it. <laughs> and Morgan's <laughs> telling this story about how she once was at work and some coworker, like, was supposed to go here, but they went there and basically, like, kidnapped her for a date. And, and I'm like, I'm looking around. Now, mind you, I'm in a room full of horror. I'm in a car full of horror writers. And I'm just kind of looking true. around at everyone, like, is anybody else going to write this? No, you're not going to. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, I'll write it. Yeah, cool. (laughs) So I I have this project I'm working on called Coworker Lunch Date, (laughs) where someone is supposed to go for lunch and they end up getting kidnapped. It's in the works. Nice. That is screenplay screenplay or prose? Screenplay. Screenplay. That's the screenplay I was working on before um, Companion. Companions, I put it down so I could work on Companion. Companions are, it's the Hollowed Hills, it's the next project for Hollowed Hills. Uh, It's in the same universe as screenplay or screenshots. So we're taking that same universe and we're creating a companion piece called Companion. Nice. Hence the so title. Clever. That one, hence the title. Well, it kind of is twofold because <laughs> it's a companion to screenshots because it's in the same universe, but mm-hmm. it's about a guy who is seeking out a particular companion. I don't want to give too much away yet because I haven't written it. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> so <laughs> he's seeking this. He's seeking this person as a companion, and him, you know. So the whole thing is. Um, in the works now, so we hope to hope to have that written in the next couple of months, and I think we're looking at hopefully filming spring, late winter, early spring. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the project that um, Thomas Moore was talking about. Nice. So if things okay. work out, that's we're going to try to get Thomas to be the director on that piece, and we got a location. We've been scouting this location out. Um, Shout out to Tyrant Toys because they're going to let us use their shop. Uh, they got a really great space in the basement. We just shot a commercial for them. We're doing some pretty cool stuff. Very nice. Very nice. And yeah, and speaking of the channel, um, Harold Hills Entertainment. Yeah, you guys almost have 100 subscribers already to the channel. But I see, um, I just pulled up the page. I was, I was wondering if we maybe we'd go over ten thousand right there in the show. That would've been awesome. But yeah, still, that still pretty cool. there over nine point five k. But yeah, it's um. Let me see. Uh, it's Hallowed Hills ENT, folks. If you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, it's Hallowed Hills ENT, and uh, yeah, you can find that at YouTube. Um, but definitely, uh, yeah, come aboard. Yeah, you'll find you know, that's the, they only have screenshots up on their videos, so it'd be easy to make sure it's the right one. But yeah, yeah definitely add them. Um, we're gonna have a a behind the scenes video here shortly. Um, I was just putting that together uh, late last week. We while we were shooting the kill scene, because of our props, we only had like one shot at it. We had one shot at pulling this off, the kill scene. 
Oh man. And oh man. Yeah. So we're like, okay, are we ready? Is this it? Are we in <laughs> position? Do you have your mic on? Is the camera running? Is everything yeah. lined up? We've got one shot at this. So because we had one shot of this, I decided to take my my um, my camera and I put it up in the in the corner. So I got to record us filming the kill scene. So now that I have that, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna put it together, and then we're gonna probably put that up here next week or so. Oh, cool! That's cool. Hey, since, since you're nearing 100 subscribers now at Hallowed Hills, make them give you another pizza party when you hit 100 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Add that to the list because I think that's we're making, worthy we're, too. I'm gonna make John pay for it. I'm like, I told John mm-hmm. earlier today. I'm like, hey, you. As long as we have a business meeting, you can write this off. It's fine. Like, it's cool. Just you can. It's all, it's meeting, all right. Off. You, can, you can write it all off. It's fantastic. He can do that. Uh, that's that's not a problem. But yeah, so hopefully that'll convince him to give you another pizza party there. But yeah, I want to do my part to help help you get some or more uh, pizza parties. Yeah. Or tacos. Or tacos. Yeah. Like tacos. And we just had a new taco truck go up in the neighborhood here, so we're, we're definitely yeah. uh, tuned into that. So, <laughs> but <laughs> but we're coming up on uh, oh about uh, nine minutes into the show. So what what I want to do is maybe get into a little bit about uh, you've talked about uh, uh, companion and you know, it's the film with that Thomas More had referenced and and some of the things like that. What else do you have in store coming up? either uh, project-wise or event-wise? Um, ooh, there's a, believe, there's, oddly, there's so many, and I, I don't even know how I'm keeping it all together because I forget about half of them. Um, okay, <laughs> so I have – I'm working on a, a piece that I – for myself called Coworker Lunch Date. I would love the opportunity to at least submit that somewhere whenever it's finished. Uh, filming it would be great, but it's kind of complicated because – it can be. Uh, there's Companion. Companion will hopefully be filmed in the spring. It's in the same universe as Screenshots. Uh, uh-huh. Beyond that, I have a podcast, and I'm trying to get some interviews lined up for that one. It's called The Moon Unscathed. The Moon Unscathed is basically uh, it's a free space for people to talk about whatever people feel needs to be talked about. Um there was a controversy over some music videos recently, and I discussed one of those. Um, I had an interview with a friend of mine who did real estate. She answered some questions about that, so there was an interview there. Um, I want to get – I have a, I have one that I want to line up about co-parenting because there's a lot of ups and downs and back and forths when it comes to the idea of co-parenting. Um, mm-hmm. I think Holly's son – Noah does some um, I have a crazy job and I would love to interview him. So <laughs> I'm a line at some point. He would love that. I, he would love I that. And he would have every intention of interviewing him. And honestly, I love doing interviews, I've recently found out. So I'm down for interviewing next to anybody about anything. And that's the thing. I think there's so many conversations that there are in the world to have and people just need a place to have them an open, comfortable, no judgment zone to, to have these sometimes fun, sometimes strange, sometimes controversial conversations. And I'm all down for all of it with no censorship, no editing, just you talk, I talk, let's talk. Beyond that, Noah, I'm just... Noah would be the perfect person because my son Noah yep. is very outspoken and, and he's very, <laughs> he has controversial <laughs> views. I'll tell you that. You want somebody that has you, he'll tell you the, the honest I'll truth. Give He's all you the truth. I'll give him all day. I'll give him all day. I'll give him a part one, part two if he wants to. I'll give him all there day. Let's go. go. Let's go. Um, that's what I want to do. A, yeah, don't put him as new one. king or president of a country. That would be very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you that's can't put me in charge of anything either. either. We've already <laughs> We've already discussed my influence on people. <laughs> We've already uh-huh. discussed my influence on people. I can't. I can't be in charge of anything either. I can't. You'd have a whole nation throw. <laughs> It'll be. You'd fun. have a whole, a whole, a whole nation throwing chairs if Moon Moon became president. <laughs> that is. There'd be a chair throwing. That is correct. Epide- epidemic. All chairs. <laughs> We're throwing all of them. 
Oh. Hey, Miss <laughs> Sandy Linder said she's down for an interview. She'll converse with you. Got it. Oh, yeah. I'm in. And she's a good one. Because I love to talk to people. And it's amazing because everyone's got stories. Everyone has a story. Everyone has an influence. There's always a thought that's running through someone's head that they've never been able to, like, really find a safe place to get out. I want to be that safe place. Uh, very quick before I get the rest of the stuff, in 2020, there was a lot of people who just did not know what side of, of a multitude of issues that they were on. And so I was always saying, you know what, we'll do a lot better as a nation if people would just meet each other. We're not as different as we think we are. If we just sat down mm -hmm. and talked to each other and met each other and understood each other and tried, we'd be in a whole better place as a society. So true. That's all I'll say on that. So true. Um, absolutely. But like I, I mentioned I've absolutely before, noticed the same thing. Same thing. I've noticed the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I wanted to start that show, just so I could do that. Mm -hmm. But I then, of course, it. I love I wrestling. It. I love professional wrestling. So a but conversation yeah. where I can – I can discuss the ins and outs, those kind of theater points about professional wrestling. No one wants to listen to me talk about this guy won this match on Monday and this guy won that match on Friday. I'm not doing any of that. But there are some other issues. Like, you know, there's a conversation right now in professional wrestling about women's wrestling and how that's not given the same fair chance as wrestling amongst men. So I would love to have a conversation about that with someone, you know, with wrestling fans. And that's the kind of thing I want to talk about on uh, Moon Eagles wrestling because everything cool. comes back to wrestling. Hence the shirt. Everything comes uh, back to wrestling. You got everything it. Everything comes back to wrestling. Um, then, of course, I have all the writings that I've done previously um, on DuanLHearn.com. There is all eight parts of Such as Life. Uh, I had a commission job at one point where I got commissioned to write four short stories for my friend David. Um, so those four are on on the website, he allowed me to retain the rights for those. Some of those might get turned into scripts at some point. Um, that's the Cop of Week collection. That's online. I don't like to write poetry, but periodically a, poet com a poem comes out. And so the website has a few poems as well. So there's all kinds of stuff that I've got going on and dancing around my head and happening around me. Um, like I said, we just filmed this commercial for Tyrant Toys. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other stuff going on. It's a lot. So, yes, so th th that, that's a great segue for what I'm going to ask you next. We've got about two minutes left. Uh, but what? Um, where do folks connect with you to follow all these awesome things? Where do you want people to go to find you, to connect online, that kind of thing? Number one place would be DuanLHearn.com. I'll spell it for you. It's DWA.com. <laughs> Everything I do is connected and center hubbed there. You can find me on all the socials at D L Hearn Writes at uh well D L Hearn Writes is the uh handle. My email is dlhearnwrites at gmail dot com. You can always contact me there about literally anything. I'm always down to listen, I'm always down to talk, I'm always down for a project. I've learned to say yes. You know, in creative spaces, just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, just real quick, I was going to give a shout-out to Ken Michaels and Remillion. Uh, see, they joined us in the chat room as well. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us tonight, uh, Dwan. And first of uh, many times to come, of course, and all, always great to, to chat with you and, and have you and around and, and definitely want you back. So thank you, man. Absolutely. It's been fun, and I can't wait to be another bad influence next year. <laughs> you will. Yes, so, Holly, over to you. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. And, yes, you and Jay got to get your butts down here and visit us for a bonfire and some good eats. And um, Definitely. And then everybody join us next Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same place, same time, rest of the week. Be creative. Night all. Okay, I'm recording. Here, just ready and happy birthday. It's a uh, the Mopez. Yeah. Careful, careful, and. 
Happy birthday. We can fix it up together. We're getting closer. Happy birthday. Get the vehicle you really want with UKFCU's auto loan. It's banking, only better. Okay, I'm recording. Here, just step. Ready and happy birthday. It's a... The Mopeds. Yeah. Happy birthday! We can fix it up together! We're getting closer. Happy birthday! Get the vehicle you really want with UKFCU's auto loan. It's banking, only better.